The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. We at the Cowboys Headquarters going up on a Tuesday. It's the Players Lounge sponsored by Tostitos, the official chip and dip yes, of the sir. Dallas Cowboys. And you are now rocking with the best. My name is Heckman Harrison, and these are players. Yes. One way or another. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from another Himalaya. <laughs> One way or another. Himalaya. Man, listen, man. Listen, man. I got my guys back, man. Dog, yeah. I, listen, man. I missed y'all, bro. I missed y'all, it's, it's man. Had bad, opportunity man. to do some other podcasts, and I said, you know what? I love it. I can't wait to get back home. (laughs) All facts. I can't wait to get back home, man. So I can see my boys, man, so we can rock out and do what we do. But Danny McCray is in the building. My man Barry Church is in the building. And uh, I get to talk ball with y'all today, man. We had a. Before I get. (laughs) Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not going to go. Not going to go any further. Before. I talk about how y'all doing. Y'all got to tell me something good. I got so much to get into. We got a good show planned, but we're going to start like we always do, a wellness check, see how y'all boys doing. BC, I start with you. What's good with you? No, everything's good. Everything's good in the the church household. Man, got some rain. Got some rain uh, today in the past couple of days. And I didn't realize, until I got my own place and everything, I'm like... Why do, you know, dads always, you know, like the lawn always got to be precise and all that. My dad yeah. used to cut the grass. But I'm like, man, why are you cutting this grass? Now I realize, man, you get a pristine lawn out there, man. I, you, ain't about to ha- you ain't about to have a little man out there cutting hey. it. Down. <laughs> hey, the Jay. lines is crooked. The lines is crooked. Man. <laughs> Barry, no pay either. Yeah, Barry, no pay. Barry it's, it's, it's actually called Homeowners Association <laughs> in your case. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> But I did sprinkle some, you know, there, you, you know. You put some, you kill some of the weeds. Yeah, I pulled them out of there too, you know. All right. I put my put my two cents in there. But, that's what now, so that's what you did for the bye week. You just you you did lawn care did some and lawn stuff care, like that. Some things around the house. So got things done. Did right? what you had to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what about you, man? How you doing over there? I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Focus up, man. Listen, LSU. He already on one. LSU won last week, okay? We played Army, but we did what we were supposed to do. And things are looking up for the the, uh, the Bayou Bengals, okay? Can't say the same. Can't, uh, bye week and then Alabama. Oh, no, Alabama. Can't say the same about the Astros, but they put up a hell of a fight. Ooh. That was a hell of a baseball series. That was a good one. And the Rangers won. <laughs> look, at, the Rangers won. They deserve to win. So hey, man, look, I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited. Sports are amazing right now. All sports that are on TV, basketball are about mm-hmm. to start, and we are you know we former athletes and all that stuff. So we yeah. we enjoy when it's when it's this time of year. Nah, it's a lot of it's a lot of different sports going on. The NBA started back up tonight. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's your, your type, but I love the NBA. Dog. Yeah. So just I can't wait for I'm trying to see tracks stupid <laughs> man what yeah. we talking three about year. playing basketball oh, yeah, <laughs> three, year, three years 186 I saw that from uh, Ante oh. yeah that's a uh, that's a that's and, back in the Brinks trip and got, his, and got his man. brothers paid too huh yeah, you know he always. <laughs> that's how you do it. Fifteen spots out there. They got yeah, three of them. I need them right here. No, but that's how you do it. You keep it in the family. Well, I'm going to get. I'm going to the whole franchise. Right. <laughs> Didn't want to complain about not winning. <laughs> you, he ain't complaining about roster spots. <laughs> he, he is not complaining. Twenty percent of the roster, yo. <laughs> That is, hey, yo, that's crazy. But those contracts, those NBA contracts, I know for you guys, you know, that have signed contracts, when you look at those NBA contracts, y'all got to be like, what? That's, that's crazy. That's, that's, it's got to be. It's and it's be all something. guaranteed. Like, you know, know, every penny guaranteed once you sign on that for the NBA. Yeah. So Man, that's, that that's crazy. Hey, but this week. wasn't negotiated. It was just written. It was just written. It was just this. <laughs> this what you get? That's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> live with it. Live, live with, with it. Go, no. <laughs> Oh, they ain't do you like that, Danny. Come on, man. Stop all that. Why you do the people like that? You know the that people did the paper like that. Hey, what? Hey, hey. <laughs> take, take it or leave it, dog. Hey. If I was you, I'd take it. <laughs> Man, like, y'all crazy. Hey, like when you get ready to leave a hotel, they just slide it under slide the door. Up. <laughs> there you go. That's you. Here's Bring that with you. <laughs> Signed and ready to go. Easy. Express checkout. <laughs> that's, 
man. Look. The envelope. <laughs> All right, so did y'all have an opportunity to watch any of this NFL football over no. over the weekend? It was for me, it was stress free. I got to yeah, look at everybody true. else's faults, and, and I saw a bunch of them, man. But I want to know about y'all, man. It's, it was some surprises uh, on the weekend. D Mac, who was your surprises of the weekend? Man, I, I was surprised Detroit got done like that. Mm, they got done um, dirty too. Like you, like you, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> You already know. <laughs> you on? You, you on today? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, no, man. Did they get? Did they get those dirty or they what? Got, they got. <laughs> Go ahead, dog. Go ahead, you back. You yeah, focus you, up, man. Focus up. Baltimore <laughs> did Detroit dirty. Okay, they came out. And I like they just look like a totally different team. You have been waiting to see Lamar Jackson with Odell and Flout, like all these all these weapons that he had, and you're like, okay, Munkin said he was gonna pass the ball a little bit more, spread it out. We hadn't seen it, and then they came out against Detroit and was like, we finna show y'all how we play. Right. And mm-hmm. from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, they literally let Detroit have everything they wanted. And prior to that, I was in here, and we all. Probably still so that Detroit was one of the top teams in the NFL. Absolutely, yeah. And I still believe they are. But to see the Baltimore Ravens go out there and do them like that, that was that was super impressive. Come yeah. on, yeah, DC, was, who, was, who you saw? Yeah, who who I, was Detroit it? was definitely one of the bigger yeah. ones. But I'm gonna go with last night with uh, Kirk Cousins out there dealing against San yeah. Francisco. I mean, this is a defense who, I mean, we all saw it. You know, we all saw the game when they played the Cowboys a couple weeks ago, and it, it looked very formidable. I mean, mm-hmm. we thought. And still rightfully so. I still say they're a top defense, but, man, Kirk Cousins was out there dealing without Justin Jefferson out there. I mean, he he had two random backs in the – well, not random, but Madison and uh, Akers back there who've been up and down, left and right. Addison, the young rookie, came out of nowhere playing ball. And and, and usually when you look at Kirk Cousins, he's the one that's always kind of flopping on primetime games, whether it's Sunday night, Thursday night, Monday night. He's usually flopping out there. But, I mean, Kevin O'Connell and them boys had a great game plan. And they, I mean, relatively so. I mean, they, if you look at the game, it, was, it wasn't close until towards the very end. Like, they, I feel like, you know, Minnesota had that game the entire time. So that was a big-time surprise for me. You know, now, those, are, those are the two games, and I'm glad you went with Detroit because that was where I was going to go with. With. I was shocked to see Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson did them boys like it was like crap shack. You know, you know, like they was the old Detroit. <laughs> yeah. they was Detroit for a while ago. Well, it's it like after the fact. They was dismantling <laughs> yeah. and taking that yeah. team apart. And I gotta say, I was shocked at the you know the passing game from Lamar Jackson too. I, we know about his legs, but the arm came with it. And this new offense that he's in, man. If this is the if this is what we're peeking towards for Lamar Jackson, mm. this is a dangerous Baltimore team. Now I don't want to be a part of the overreact overreact crowd. Oh, yeah, don't don't do now, that. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but I but I think based off of what we were talking about earlier, Detroit defensively and offensively I'm were saying. that surprise team that you felt like Campbell had turned it around and power rankings, even though we talk about mm-hmm. this in the NFL, mm-hmm. that was one of your top five teams in the NFC, no matter how you looked at it. You still and maybe still look at uh Detroit that way, but I'm with you, dog. San Fran. Wow. That, that's what? because it, that's because it make you feel better as a Cowboys fan. <laughs> no, no, so no, wait, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, that's the guys? No, that's who y'all talking about? They went out there and lost two straight? Yeah. Yeah. That's your man. That's That's your man right there. Boys was hyping Purdy. I mean, oh, he came up in. So, what'd he do to us? He did. Like, he did. And, and that's the NFL, though, right? So it's like it's 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 week by week. Yeah. Every week we come here and do the same thing. How San Francisco ended up losing two games in a row last week? We we kind of put an asterisk by it because they lost CMC. Yeah. You lose Debo, Trent Williams. This this week is just Debo and Trent Williams. But you got CMC. You should be able to beat Kittle. You and Kittle. They're missing Justin Jefferson. You should be able to beat them. Yeah. All right. And they came out there and played a heck of a defensive game. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. Of, is it a is it Flores? Was it I think Flora, Brian Flora, Flores is over there. I think went out so. there and he drew up some masterful for them dudes. So CMC still went off now. He, he did. He, he did still his did his thing. But yeah, I, like it, 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 was, it was surprising. But I know why you feel better about it. I know why you feel better <laughs> you, about it. Are you more surprised at, <laughs> at the at the you know the offense being you know what it was turning the football over or that defense that's I mean 
they, they you know top defense in the league up to this point. I think it's kind of like diced up. You know, I think it's a little mm-hmm. bit of both. You guys know when you get to this point in the season and injuries are starting to affect teams, you don't expect for them to look like they did when mm-hmm. they when they're in full strength. I mean, what a difference a Trent Williams make mm-hmm. on your yeah, offensive right. line. All right, what a difference a Debo Samuels make in your passing game. No matter where he is in his career right now, you still have to account for where Debo mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. I think on the on the other side for the defense. That linebackers are still the truth, but there were just some holes that I didn't think that Kirk Cousins could find. And they had look, there was some lucky breaks though. I mean, some of those balls, they, they come on. Yeah, he should have had two picks. Uh, yeah, come on. Oh boy, yeah, he got hey, you, you know, know I mean, so. I know that's what I want to say. Hey, it happens. It happens. <laughs> it happens. But um, but still, when you look at the game, it was like, and you break it down, you're just saying to yourself, like, come on, man, this is uh, this is one of those teams that after they beat us, everybody's saying, can anybody beat them? You know, is is Purdy the number one quarterback in the league? And it doesn't make me feel good to see them lose, but it does say, dang, well, you know, where was all this when y'all played us? Yeah. Oh, you look at me and you say, hold on, we got stomped by them, and they went out there and lost two straight to some Back teams. To, with to Cleveland. Cleveland. <laughs> P.J. Walker was that quarterback. Yo, you lost Cleveland. to Cleveland, <laughs> and you lose to Minnesota? And stomped us. Stomp, stomp, so, yeah, stomped us out. So, so it, just, it, it depends on how you want to look at it. I would say this about Kirk Cousins, because we do, like, primetime games every once in a while to do. But no matter what year in the year, he, he got the stats. He gonna put up All right. Yeah. So his, 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 they're, they're going to be competitive in the game, That's especially true. offensively. So to me, it was no surprise that he still went out there and they put up numbers yeah, against him, which was a, it was still it ain't like they went out there and put up thirty plus on him. Mm-hmm. But he was still doing his thing. So shout out to Kirk Cousins. But we just want to remember that Kirk Cousins has always been able to put up big time numbers. Yeah. Primetime Kirk, and we got <laughs> primetime Kirk, and he showed us why he primetime That's Kirk. True. But now that you see, you, you've seen the 49ers lose. You've seen. The, the Philadelphia Eagles look vulnerable in, in their moments. Well, let's give them the yeah. same treatment you just gave to uh, San Francisco because they came out and did what to Miami? So they look off the they look off the week before, yeah. okay, and they come back and this is the same Miami that put up seventy on Denver mm-hmm. with Tyreek mm-hmm. Hill out there and mm-hmm. Waddle mm-hmm. and Tua. All right, the offensive line was a little shaky, and that's and that's unfortunate when so you go him. against a team like Philly. But <laughs> get them to, get them the same <laughs> here's, treatment. Here's my opportunity to, yes. to allow you to walk the red carpet with your other boys. No, no, I'm, I'm just, just go the other boys. <laughs> <second. Man, laughs> you know, I'm just saying coming listen, to the microphone. I'm just saying, Danny McCray. Hey. Be fair. If we're going to say, okay, week in, week out, whatever, because mm-hmm. last week we were like, okay, Philly lost. And we all sat here and said, man, that's, you know, every, <laughs> every, <laughs> any given Sunday you can get out there and yeah. lose it. And we came back here today and was like, did you see San Fran? <laughs> Went out there and looked bad. Yeah, we circled the game. Most people circled that game between Miami and Philadelphia and was like, okay, this is going to be one of them games where uh, – we're going to find out who was who. Mm-hmm. And then you watched it and you found out who was who. And I found out from Miami that they obviously, just like we saw from San Francisco, were missing players. Got to give A that. A lot. Yeah, they were missing players. But also, Tariq Hill, I mean, he dropped a wide open touchdown. I thought McDaniel, like, he coached against himself. We've been looking at Miami. And where was their running game? Well, they didn't non-existent. Have non-existent. Yeah. You know, a lot of the things that we've seen from them, they completely gave up. But I'm talking about the NFC power rankings as we see it right mm-hmm. now. To, after what happened with the 49ers and what you're seeing with Philadelphia, where do you look at the NFC and how do you rank these teams right now? It's the same. Okay. <laughs> I, I have Philly as number one, San Francisco number two, Detroit number three, us number four. I, I, I stop, I, I'll just stop right there. But that's what – I still have it there with us being off last week just yeah. because we saw what Philly did. They proved that they're the number one team. Until until we are able to beat San Francisco or they are, like, out of the playoff race, they're going to be ahead of us because it's been three years, and the last time we played them, right. they embarrassed us. So they're going to be ahead of us. And I think Detroit, they still got the biggest win of the season yeah. <laughs> against, uh, Kansas <laughs> against Kansas City. And they went out there against a Lamar Jackson-led team where any given any given day, Lamar Jackson and that squad can do that to just about any team in the league if they click on all cylinders like that. So I'm I'm, I'm just leaving it where it is. They got that same 38-6 they got that beat yeah, down. They got smacked. Um, they got smacked. When it comes Who to the NFC, I kind of got a similar. I got Philly up at the top. And then I'm saying there's a little gap. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm saying there's Philly. And then there's, there's a little respectable gap between the 49ers, who's next. I got Detroit in there. And then I'm kind of Cowboy slash Seattle. Because I, I like what okay. I'm seeing out there out of the West. I mean, you know, Geno Smith, he's more consistent. Last year he showed he can do it. This year he's he's backing it up. So I, I feel like they got a little, they got something cooking up there in the West. So I'm putting Cowboys in Seattle kind of that slash four. But to me, when you look at it, Eagles, 
even in that loss where he turned the ball over, I think, three times, yes. they still had an opportunity to win the game. And we've seen it all year long. Philly just ain't really clicking. Everybody's kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't see the same Jalen Hurts. You know, the coordinators not being there I think is huge. Um, but they're still 6-1. and one. Even all, all through all of that, we still, in my opinion at least, believe I have, we haven't seen the best Philadelphia team. So I got to put them up there. And when you look at the Florida 49ers, yes, they, they stomped the mud hole in the Dallas Cowboys, you know, a couple weeks back. But two back-to-back losses against, yes, Cleveland has a, a great defense, but that quarterback was, was P.J. Walker out there. And he was able to orchestrate drives and getting points on that 49ers defense. Then you fast-forward to last, or, you know, a couple, or last night. Last night. Kirk Cousins. With was, no Jay Jetta. With no Jay Jetta was out there dealing. I mean, the man threw, threw it 40 sometimes and didn't get received no sacks. There was no pressure on that man. And we talking about Bosa, you know, yeah. all those guys yeah, out what there. What happened so, to them? What happened? What yeah. happened to those boys? So, granted, there was a couple breaks, but like we say, you know, things happen in the league. So, to me, I, that's a big gap. Not a big gap. That's medium okay, gap. What about, medium a, what about a healthy a healthy San Francisco 49ers. With Debo and yeah, Trent. Yeah, you got Debo, you got Trent. Remember uh, against Cleveland, they were missing uh, mm-hmm. Debo, Trent, uh, and CMC for, yeah. for, for a little part of that game. So a healthy uh, 49ers to me, I don't know. I, I still got to see them. In, see I got to see, yeah. see yeah. them in Philly. I think the thing about Philly is <laughs> my, my other boys. This is what I said about Philly and why I had them number one when I was uh, on the break. Um, with, with Derek mm-hmm. and Nick. Philly is a team that no matter what, they can find a way to win. And that's offensively, defensively, or on special teams. Yeah. No matter what's not clicking. Mm-hmm. And that's the difference between us, San Fran, Philly is, okay, Philly go out there, Jalen Hurts don't look right. Don't worry, Carter and Slay and them, and them boys, they're going to figure out a way to get it done. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, the defense not showing up? Don't worry, Jalen Hurts and Swift and uh, A.J. They're going to find a way to get it done. Wait, we need something from special. Like, no matter what is not going right for them, they still have an opportunity to win the game. But you look at a team like us where you say, okay, defense ain't – they ain't stopping nobody, right? Mm-hmm. Then you like – you could just close your eyes, and if somebody tell you defense not stopping nobody, you can just automatically yeah, assume yeah. you're probably going to lose that game, right? Right, mm-hmm. and I think that's the difference between <laughs> Philly and then most of the other teams in the league. Yeah. You know, I'm with you. I, I think you know Philadelphia. I'm still going to put them at number one. Uh, win, ugly, just win. That's all that matters. Win, um, and the the gap they've increased that when I've seen what what you just said. 49ers, the way that they lost, the two teams that they lost mm-hmm. to, regardless of health, no one's giving us any excuses right. for losing Trayvon Diggs. Nobody care. You know, they hey, y'all lost two to the teams y'all lost to, and y'all are gonna be ranked in and around that four fifth spot no matter what. Like what you said about Seattle, that's a sneaky good team that a lot of people are not talking about. And oh by the way, they got a pretty damn good defense. Yeah, they flying right now. They they really do. They got a pretty good and we see them too. We see yeah, that's true. We're gonna see all of them. (laughs) They all of them. We're gonna see them (laughs) too. Which is crazy to me, man. Which is crazy to me. And on top of that, when we talk about when we talk about Philadelphia, and you know, man, it drives me crazy. <laughs> this guy. You've been talking about him more and more. Yeah. Hey, man, so yeah, come, from, boy, listen, man. come on, man. Come yeah, yeah. on, man. You started, off, you started off right here. I'm you talking about you didn't even mention Philly. Yeah. You said f- he was mad. Just, oh, listen, and now he's he like, let me finish. Yeah, man. I was like, man, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm going to listen. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm so, going to listen. The dude, Howie Roseman, right now, is dealing. And I don't care how you look at it. If you're a Mario of the NFL, where you just like good football, you see what he's doing. Kevin Byer, the the no, guy that from, dude's real. Mm-hmm. from from he Tennessee. Nice. I know y'all uh, y'all he, would know yeah. a safety he if we nice. break up a safety. He nice. uh, came into the league in 2016. I believe he has something like 27 interceptions nice. uh, for his career. Two time All Pro, two time Pro Bowler. Dude is like that. And mm-hmm. somehow the Philadelphia Eagles have found a way to add more pieces to a already really good roster. Now. Guys, you're sitting here in the front office. Put on your Will McClay hat for me, please. <laughs> Are you looking at this? Come on, D-Mac. You looking at this roster right now as the trade deadline approaches, October 31st at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Are you not making a move, Danny? Ooh, this is your team. You tell me. Give it to me 100. Man, look, if, if, if there is a interior defensive lineman out there that is that – is, is one of those guys where you're like, he's going to make a difference? Yes, sir. Okay. A linebacker, 
Yes, sir. Other than that, nah, I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. Linebacker, defensive lineman. I think if you get one of those difference <laughs> makers, bro, playing the three technique or the one technique, bro, it will change this defense. As good as it already is, mm -hmm. it will change this defense. Wow. You've seen it in Philly. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen it. It's hard to find those type of guys. Mm -hmm. But if you're able to, hey, man, somebody calls and say, hey, man, listen, we rebuilding and we we just, we, Here, take we, this sorry. Guy. Yeah. sorry. We, we can't throw no names out. <laughs> we can't throw no names. It's not. Guy. It's not. Guy. I, I, don't, I don't even know who that guy is because yeah. we talked about it on the other show it's it, like it's not that many of those yeah. those difference makers mm -hmm. in, in in the interior uh, defensive linemen so I don't know who that guy would be but if there's an opportunity to get one of those linebacker or defensive linemen yes other than that man you got weapons all over the you place do. Do. Uh, Deron Bland stepping in nicely for uh, Trayvon Diggs you still got Gilmore out there Jordan Lewis has been a starter in the league still uh, forcing turnovers can cover in the slot so I don't I don't see any other uh, way where you like alright we, we have to go make an upgrade here to, to get us to the playoffs BC put the cap on. Man, well, first off, um, what's up with Tennessee? They just giving Philly these <laughs> Every first A.J. Brown. Here, yeah, have A.J. On. Brown. You can go out here and direct the league and take our all-pro safety as well. They Somebody got something on Tennessee. They just flipping. I mean, I just don't get they it. They golf buddies. They just get it. You got it. Man. You're making a run. We, we got it. So, here, you can go ahead and get it. It's crazy to me. But – um, we talk about a move to make. I, I'm with you, D-Mac. I'm talking about that second level as a, as a linebacker core. I, you know, I would definitely look into making a move up there because where you got right now, um, you got, you know, Damone Clark out there and the majority of the snaps, in my, and I believe, I mean, I don't, I don't even look, got it in front of me or nothing like that, but the majority of snaps went to Marquise Bell, who had a great game. Don't get me wrong. He played unbelievable against the Chargers. But going forward, man, I, I just don't see – if you can play him in that role. I know LVE may come back, you know, in a couple weeks or whatever, but in the meantime, I don't know if you can continuously play him in that role because when you see it, not everybody's going to be as finesse as the Chargers were, where it was kind of just, you know, oh, we're read option here, you know, we'll dump it off to you there. A lot of those people are going to do like the 49ers did when they see 14 in, in the box like that. Man, we're going right downhill at you. We're going to go against some more physical opponents. So I, could, I, I wish they were able to make a move in that second level because LV was such a big loss. You got them on Clark. Other than that, who, you got a couple guys, you know, Evans, they on the practice squad. But, you know, who are you going to put in there that's a real linebacker body that's going to be able to battle in the trenches. So either, like you said, a three technique, one technique on the interior or that second level, I think is a must. Well, you got, you got the bazooka. Yeah. You do, but you have to. But you know, but you know where you need him. You yeah, know where yeah, you need, no, you know, know where you need him, and he doesn't even count against those numbers when you're just thinking about how we attack. I don't want to see him in off ball. I don't want to see him out in coverage. It's he no got one, he got one assignment. <laughs> he got one assignment, and I need you to stick with it. But when we come back, man, we're gonna talk about this 12 p.m. game time and uh, whether this these, it makes these guys nervous. Coming up next on the Players Lounge. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at Blockchain.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of you and everyone else absolutely loving new smoothie bowls from Smoothie King. And woo, me too. These smoothie bowls start with acai and pataya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. New smoothie bowls, only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more, the bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big belt buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back 
to the Players' Lounge. The Salvation Army 27th Annual Red Kettle Kickoff returns to AT&T Stadium this Thanksgiving. Get excited to watch the one and only Dolly Parton rock the stage during halftime when your Dallas Cowboys go head-to-head with the Washington Commanders. Tune in at 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Back in action here on the Players' Lounge. I'm Heckman Harrison, Danny McCray, Barry Church in the place to be. And, man, by week done. That's a wrap. It's over. Now you got everything to look forward to. No more off time. Mm-mm. Nobody going to cry for you now. 12 p.m. game at home, and the Dallas Cowboys, <clears throat> Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is this could be the 11th consecutive home victory for the Dallas Cowboys. So mm-hmm. that's, big that's, that's big time. 2-0 and at home so far. Wait a minute before you go. I, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so but let, me ask, let me ask y'all, for, you know, you guys, uh, what was y'all, what was the magic hour for Danny McCray and Barry Church? What were the games that y'all loved the most? Was it 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock? What was the kickoff time? Man, I love me a good 12 o'clock game. I ain't going to lie to you. Go ahead and get it over with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, get started. Don't have to sit around and wait, watching the other games, seeing what happened. Mm-hmm. I love me a good, good 12 o'clock game. And the Monday night, like a Monday night, a Monday night game would get you too. But I prefer 12 o'clock, man. Sunday, go ahead and get it on up out the way so I can get the work done and go on home and <laughs> eat some food, figure so out what I'm going to do. Yeah, I love it. I you love, love it. it. Uh, what about you? Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I, I love the 12s. 12. And I didn't really get to have money 12s until I got to Jacksonville. And we were playing <laughs> almost every week on, on 12 o'clock games. I was Seriously? Like, Man, this is, yeah, we were always. We only had, even the year we went to the AFC Championship, I think we only had one prime time. And it was a 325 game, really, or 425 out there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I love the 12 o'clock. Because, you, like, you, like you said, you ain't sitting around. You know, thinking about what's going on, you just get up, shower, you at the stadium, and you and you ready to roll. Those three o'clock and those those later games, after you eat a little bit, it's sitting on your stomach. <laughs> then you're like, man, I gotta go out here, man. It's just <laughs> twelve o'clock. You get it in, you get it out, and, and you and you out of there. So I'm with the twelves. So for this Dallas Cowboy team, this is their first twelve o'clock game of the season. Do you worry about any letdown from this young team? Is there any? Do you love it or hate it for them, especially it being their first twelve o'clock game? <laughs> I tell you what, okay. Um, I'm, I'm not worried because we do have some. We have some veteran leadership yeah. on this squad, okay. And I think Mike McCarthy is going to be able to get them right. Dan Quinn to get them right. Hopefully, they don't come out uh, sleepwalking. But we do know it, it can happen. But they playing a team that's coming from LA. Yeah, that's <laughs> real. Early. That's real. Early. Ten o'clock for them, okay. <laughs> so, so if it's anybody at a disadvantage at this point, I'm gonna give it to the. I'm gonna give it to the other squad. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> now nah, hopefully they've been off a week. They rested. They like. They, hopefully they're like just itching, itching to yeah. get back out there. They watched uh, football all, all week. They saw the same 49ers scene go out there and lose. Right. So mm. now they feel a little bit more confident in what they can do as far as finishing the season. Hopefully, getting the number one seed, winning the division, whatever that is. So. So hopefully they're just ready to go. Yeah, I'm with you. I think, you know, the disadvantage goes with the, the Rams on this one. Coming all the way from, you know, L.A., 10 o'clock start time for the, for what they're used to. So that may bog them down a little bit out there. But overall, man, I just – Man, I just – usually Mike McCarthy has his teams ready to roll. Like, we can never say, man, this team is just, you know, starting slow. Like, we used to be able to say with, you know, Garrett in his tenure over there. So, he usually has them ready to roll. So, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with McCarthy on this one and say he's going to have them ready to roll at 12 o'clock. But, we um, – Nothing about nothing know, about man. it makes you guys nervous, and that does not sound right to me. I at least figured there would be some pushback on this because y'all remember the Denver Broncos game? I, I believe at, at eight, 12? It was twelve o'clock. Yeah, it was daylight savings, so you did have another hour to prepare. <laughs> it still came out flat. Do you worry about that? At least them coming out flat, what? not. Well, oh, yeah, like I said, it's, a, it's possible for them to come out flat, especially coming off a of bye week. Yes. You know, like you haven't played, you out of that routine. That's possible, but I think. I think they have enough leadership on this team to then get it figured out if it does happen. I'm going to bet that they come out ready to play because of where they are in the season. And believe me, they still have not forgot about getting stomped out by the San Francisco 49ers. Right. They still got a lot to prove. To take a whooping like that, you see them come back the next week, galvanize the team going against the Chargers. Mm-hmm. They want to pick up and keep that momentum going on. And I think you, they're, they're hearing that in the locker room. Yeah. Wednesday when they they going to hear, hey, man, 12 o'clock game. Yeah. <laughs> Just so y'all know, you need a Red Bull, whatever you need. <laughs> Make sure you ready to go, all right? Because if not, this is not the uh, Arizona Cardinals that you playing. This is Sean McVay and them mm-hmm. boys, and Cooper Cup is back and healthy, and they got they can make some stuff happen on you before you wake up. 
mess around and be down by 20. Well, let's do that. Let's <laughs> so. do that. I mean, because y'all have got an opportunity to watch mm-hmm. some football, and you know this team. I know we're going to talk about them all week, but just your initial thoughts on the Los Angeles Rams. What, what's your thoughts on them? Uh, when you talk about defensively, um, I think, you know, I think they're, they're slacking a little bit on that end of it. When you when you look at the Rams team in, in the past, it was, you know, they got Aaron Donald, who's still a dog. Don't get me wrong. He's still a beast. But he also had people beside him that can that can do work. They used to have Sean Robinson out there, Leonard Floyd, right. that can help Aaron Donald get after the pass rusher. When I look at him now, it's kind of like, is Aaron Donald or bust? Like, if he doesn't get back there and get pressure, the quarterback pretty much got all day back there. So, to me, defensively, if they if the Cowboys play similar to what they did last week and Dak's able to make those throws, I think offensively we should have or the Cowboys should have a big time game. But when you talk about you know the Rams offense, I, that worries me a little bit because you you got Cup out there and he ain't just stationary on the outside. No. They move that man slide, you know, got him in motion. They do a lot of that eye candy stuff that the San Francisco 49ers did, where it's you know you see a lot, you see a little type deal. So him and Nakua both out there, you got two dynamite weapons. We didn't get. We don't. I don't believe we had that to match on the on the other side. I'm I'm not so sure. I mean, I know Bland is playing well, but Gilmore. If we looked at what Gilmore's been doing this this season, he's not the same Gilmore for 2019. You know, he, he struggles with guys. And I was talking with um when we were on what was I on talking Cowboys earlier uh, last week, and uh, Brian Broaddus was breaking it down to us where he believes Gilmore he, he's lost a little bit of a step when when teams are starting to run him on over routes. It's hard for him to keep up over there. So. I'm a little bit worried when it comes to the Rams' offense, but if that pass rush comes to play, then that can negate everything. Yeah, I, listen, the, the strength of their team is the wide receivers and the quarterback, okay? Mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford's been doing it for a long time. Even with Cooper Cup out, we see Nakua mm-hmm. get out there. Puka. and you, Puka. Puka. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his stats now, okay? I think he's two yards short of Jamar Chase as far as having uh, the most receiving yards in the first, whatever, seven, eight games. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. the dude is producing. And he was in there by himself, and defensive coordinators knew that uh, Matthew Stafford was, th- was throwing to him, and he still found a way to still get 100 yards after 100 yards after 100 yards. Mm-hmm. So you know that he is he is the real deal. And then you got Cooper Cup, triple crown guy. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when you're looking at what you need to stop, it's usually like, hey, you got to stop the run. Nah, <laughs> that yeah. ain't it. You got to figure out a way to trick Matthew Stafford into seeing some stuff that yeah. he doesn't usually see. Uh, Maybe seeing some ghosts, give Michael Parsons some, Parsons some time to get back there and get those sacks. But if you give him time <clears throat> with those two guys out there, then it's going to be a long day for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Man, you, I got a I got a good friend named Puka. He's not from the Polynesian Islands. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Puka. <laughs> but, <laughs> man, Puka Nakua, one of the names that you hear a lot, um, mm-hmm. and it's because he's producing. It, it, that's, that's the only reason. Him and Cooper Cup and what you just mentioned, those crossing routes – they gonna get the Los Angeles Ram gonna give you that all, all day, day long. And I saw um, what's uh, T.J. Watt mm-hmm. on his interception, and he's playing in three four, but he backs out, he baits did. him, and on the crossing route that he undercut. And to me, I was like, man, that's crazy to see T.J. Watt undercut a route. He's a dick. How did this happen? And you rewind it and you see they baited him because they do a lot of those crossing routes, and that's how Puka's been eating. Now that Cooper Cup is back. That's how he – I mean, you know what he does, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to move him and put him in every position to win. But that's where I worry about Gilmore. That's where, uh, that's where I worry about him and his – because what have teams been doing? Right racing away, him across yeah, the field him and, and, and making him track those, cro- those crossing routes. But I think on the other end, offensively, we got to eat. This is a game. You got to. You got to eat. You got to eat. And, and I don't know. Like, when I, when I came away from – Every, when the last minute went off last I, uh, last night, I was like, we got an opportunity. We got stumped out by the 49ers, but we got to make up for it because this next two-game stretch, no matter how you look at it, it's important because of the who's at the end of that two-game stretch. Mm-hmm. You win this, you go into Philly, you get a victory in Philadelphia. Dog, that puts you right back up at the top. Let's just focus on this week. <laughs> hold on, hold on let's now. Let's hold focus on, on this now. week, hold on now. Let's focus on the Rams. I'm you know saying it made it all the I'm way. Break, wait a minute, I break it down. <laughs> Team ain't even came back yet. He uh, talking about beating Philly already. <laughs> I'm twenty, baby. I'm twenty. Can we just can we just focus on this week? <laughs> yeah, D-Mac, let me live, man. Let me live. Let me live. Man, that man, 
<laughs> it does set up Reach a crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> this man, goodness gracious. Man, let me live. That's why you do me like that, man. Let me get to my video. Hey, hey, but you know how important this is, that's man. True, we got to get this one. We got to get this one. And I'm, and I'm going to concentrate on the Rams. And that's why this game is so important. Because it just tees you up to a bigger matchup. In the next week, you know what it is. Yeah. We know what's coming. You it, trying, dog. You trying. Man, you know I want that. You trying. You know he hey, he, he, he trying he try to and still put it on, on left. Let me tell you something. Hey, we're no. out there lost <laughs> to the NFC West already in Arizona, okay? Uh-huh. And for, for, for all intents and purposes, okay, when you say we got stumped out by um by San Francisco, yeah, yes. Arizona gave time. us <laughs> Arizona's yeah. gave us everything we wanted That's out there. Whooping. Okay. Yeah, so Rams. Yes. <laughs> Rams. No, no. The NFC West for us, <laughs> it ain't been is good. Is the AFC we, South Invitational huh? again? No, no, no. no, it's the NFC West Invitational. We owe it to we uh, we owe one right now. Yeah. Actually, we owe it two. Owe it two. We owe it two right now. now. This is a team. This is a team we you cannot overlook them. Matthew Stafford, again, even with the offensive line, and that was my biggest question. Like, what does this offensive line look like? The pieces that they had in the Super Bowl years, those are mm-hmm. gone. But Matthew Stafford is getting the ball out quicker. He's not taking that punishment back there. They're getting behind the running game, and that's the biggest thing for me. Hey, we got to make sure that we stop the run. We cannot give the Rams any life. We can't just, okay, roll our helmets out there. They're going to let – no, 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 no. They are going to come to play. And guys like Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, this is – this is that's hey, it. this is a serious matchup, man, that I can't – I cannot um, – Man, I can't say no. I'm big this game. Oh, is, ready. Uh, you ready? Yeah, you know. 12 o'clock. Woo, I, just 12 want o'clock. You, I just want you to focus on this week, man. You just, D-Mac. You Monday keep when I come in here next Monday, D-Mac. I'm telling see, you. See? Man. See? I already talking about Monday. Hey. See? That, bro, that's just, this is the same thing that we were talking about against Arizona. I'm just telling you. It went the same way. The same way. Man, I don't know. This guy won't let me live. But what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. And we're going to talk about the end of this bye week and uh, what they're looking for improvements on in this next game and which group on the Players' Lounge. Man, see how you do me, Doc. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites in a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. Cowboys VIP. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big bell buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together. We cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back Back to the Players' Lounge. The 2024 PBR World Finals are taking over AT&T Stadium. It all starts on May 17th with Kid Rock's Rock and Roll Rodeo. Then on May 18th and 19th, the finalists compete in the 2024 PBR Championship. Let's rock and ride. Three-day tickets are on sale now at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing partner of AT&T hey, Stadium. Yo, man, let's go. What a PBR. Man, everybody's saying that. Everybody's saying that. 
the <laughs> segment, for the last <laughs> segment <laughs> of the Players Lounge, <laughs> Beckman Harrison, he's Barry Church. He's damn Man. great. <laughs> now, y'all with the one team. All right, so we had the bye week. We evaluated positions. We talked about potential you know, trade deadline, everything. Guys, there's a position group that you have in mind that you're like, look, they had to have gotten this corrected with the two weeks that they've had to look at this. On Sunday, what's going to be that position group that you're going to say, hey, I'm looking at these guys to see what the bye week did for them? What group is that, Dan? Does it just have to be one, or is it the quarterback-receiver hey, connection? This show, show. Because, well, I'm just saying, because I want to say the receiver group, but I just feel like the connection between the quarterback and the receiver is where we're, we're is, where there's a disconnect there, mm-hmm. right? Because we know that we have the talent and the skill to be – to be more efficient and more and, and more dynamic, more explosive than yeah, we have sure. been uh, so far this season. So hopefully they're not a position group, but Dak and his receivers are more on the same page about what they need to do in order to be more explosive than they've been uh, so far this season. Man, that's that's a big one because I believe over the first six games, that's been the biggest disconnect between this offense. Mm-hmm. They have not been on time. Um, uh, my man uh, Mike G mm-hmm. hadn't been there, and that he's man, he's receiving a lot of heat, and they gave him a lot of targets too. That's why, yeah. Because he got three of them, <laughs> <Ten. laughs> twenty four yards, targets, twenty four yards, ten targets, yeah. A and, miller catch, and, and, and that's <laughs> uh, I ain't cool, and that's, it wasn't me. <laughs> but, but either way, but either way, that's a that's a position group that that I agree with you, man. That 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 connection between Dak. And his wide receivers, I don't know if he took them to Cabo or what they had to do over the public angle. Nah, no Cabo. I, I don't even know. They went to Nick and Sam's there. up the street, man. Nick and Sam, that's what they went. Thank you. Thank you for the sponsor. All right. Uh, but either way, that connection has to happen. BC, what about you? I'm going to go with the running game on this one. Um, I don't know if it's the O line, you know, whatever it is going there, or if it's Tony Pollard, division, whatever the case may be. Like when you talked about the connection between Dak and his. This, this running game, just it's just not what I thought it might be going into the season. And we looked at Tony Pollard, there's a lot of question marks going into the year. You know, after that injury, can he bounce back? Can he be that bell cow guy? Can he be the guy that, you know, Zeke was for so many years? Not saying he got to be that type of back, but kind of the same level of production. And we just haven't seen it. If you look out here, the last two games, 23 carries, 59 yards in the last two games. So, I don't know if it's lack of him getting the attempts or getting whatever in the passing game, running game, whatever it is, but he's just not producing. And I just I just lo- would love to see more from Tony Pollard and his running game because I feel like that's when you get the best Dallas Cowboys offense, when they're balanced out there. And it's not just all on one individual. So, to me, hey, this running game, it's, it speaks for not, itself the last two games. Not very what, sure. What's up with it? What's up? I remember when Zeke's numbers looked like that. And I remember very – you did not take it easy on Zeke like that. <laughs> no. Okay? Wrote it like Zorro. Oh, man. But This man said 23 <laughs> carries. <of Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that Cardi B of it. What? <laughs> Wait a second. What, what did you? <laughs> Nikki? Oh, my God. Yeah, the Nikki Minaj going on there. Zorro. Go ahead, go ahead, ahead D-Man. But no, but no. Um, <laughs> yes, when... <laughs> When Zeke, oh, no. if, if Zeke was here, his numbers look like that. Oh man, I'm <laughs> talking about it. Would it, they would have been throwing a fit? I can't believe this. not just you. I'm talking about yeah. just people in general. Because what happens is when you think about Tony Pollard, you think about how explosive he is. You're thinking about four or five yards of carry. Exactly. Right. That ain't four. No, is that, that two? That ain't <laughs> that ain't two point three yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. So like yeah. So like like it has it has mm-hmm. to pick up because like the style of ball you want to play is. I'm going to lean on my defense by helping them and us keeping the ball by running it. That's the formula. Third and short and moving the sticks. 23 carries, 50 some yards. And that ain't moving no sticks. That should be one game, 23 <laughs> carries, or, or or near near with it when you talk about receiving and running. But 23 over two games, that's that's bad. That's not going to cut it. That's, that's not going to cut it. That's and not the, the thing, formula. And the thing is, when you see somebody like CMC have a game like that, his the imprint that he has outside of just running, running the ball, the ball yeah, is it's, huge, right? Yeah, you got three mm-hmm. touchdowns on three catches for you know whatever. So like if you're not getting the the yards that we are expecting, five point your uh, five point whatever yards to carry, then yeah, you got to be catching some touchdown, being a difference maker in the passing game, whatever that is, or else you know so we, we, look, we in trouble. If we look at the 49ers, he had let's see eight rushes and you know four receptions. So that's twelve. 
Mm-hmm. That's twelve touches total for for a guy that is explosive as as a Tony Pollard mm-hmm. is. I just you know I ain't got I would, the bat. Yeah, I would love to see more of it. You know, in the, in the LA game it was a little bit more. He had fifteen rushes and six receptions. The six receptions went for eighty, but there was one, one play, play where it was kind of a scramble broke down and threw sixty to him, yards. So, I believe on that one. Yeah, on that one play. From behind. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's, yeah I, was, yeah. I was wondering what that yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> You don't see that. Got some, no, there's some other fast guys in the league, okay? No, yeah, but, okay. <laughs> nah, no, nah, nah. but, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this. And, and that's where I was going, uh, BC. I, I was going with the running back position. I thought that Tony Pollard was the one player that needed the bye week. He needed the bye week. Because Tony Pollard, man, at a lot of points, this done those six games, I was like, man, he's he running like he already in midseason form, you know, and I agree that the touches, if they don't come in the form of running the ball, we need to at least expose him as a as, as a, a wide receiver. receiver. Yeah. And and I think you saw that uh, two weeks ago, but it was you got all the yardage on on one play. But either way, that's the kind of imprint that you want for Tony Pollard mm-hmm. to have. But he has to have more of an imprint in the running game because what does that do? That keeps the clock running. Mm-hmm. That keeps your you know, you know, keeps your defense fresh. And for all the things that Mike McCarthy has promised about this offense. We've seen it work to perfection when it has that balance, like yeah. you just spoke of. Mm-hmm. And then the defense can just come in there and hunt That's and what do what they do. Um, but, man, I'm telling you, this, this, there's, not, there's some pressure on the defense, too. Yeah, well, There's some pressure on the defense, no matter what. There's some pressure on the defense, and there's some pressure on Michael Parsons. I believe that Michael Parsons in his production and what you thought would be by now, you hadn't seen it, and maybe it's because of the double teams. Maybe it's because of the way the teams are playing him. Let's see if Dan Quinn. Let's see if Dan Quinn has reformulated anything with number eleven and found what? Found a way. Man. Come on, man. I got two. I got two things real quick. Go ahead. Okay, you talk about uh, Tony Pollard need a bye week in week six. They yeah. ain't play no preseason, <laughs> and he got how many more games left without a bye week? Man, yeah, man, because well, that, because if that's the case, then he in trouble. And how they blocking Michael Parsons? I just I just can't I can't do it anymore. Okay, that's we cool. sat there and watched Miles Garrett have a two tight ends follow him from left mm-hmm. to right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He yeah. caused him to get a false, I mean, uh, uh, what is it? A legal delay formation or whatever it is. They got yeah. delay a game because they was waiting, trying to figure out where he was mm-hmm. going to be at. When you talk about Michael Parsons and we say, okay, how about this? Where is he now in in the uh, in, <laughs> in the defensive player of the year vote? Right. What, what do you think? Like, how is he at the He's top? He's dropping down. Or, but behind who? Miles Garrett? TJ Watt. TJ Watt. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, is, is it close? Right now, is it close? Based off what mm. you've seen from those from those two, and then TJ Micah. Watt right now is running away with it. My and my estimation, but just with the way that he's playing. I mean, and these are two over these, Miles. Like Miles just jumped no, smooth no, no. over. Uh, this, 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 <laughs> let me just say this. And when I look at those two guys, and I just do the schematics on them, I, they book much bigger, and they play in a different scheme mm-hmm. than than he, than we've had this conversation. I tease it, playing in the three four versus playing in the four three, and I don't know if Dan Quinn is going to ever get around to that as long as he's coaching in Micah. But maybe that's the best position for him in this defense versus moving him all around the way that. They, but he'd have to be bigger. To yeah, play. I'm going to say you can't just line him up in one no, spot. No, no, uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, he'd yeah. have to be bigger. He'd and I think bigger, the guys yeah. that you're talking about are. Jesus Christ, this kid, I mean, what is this guy from, from Cleveland made of? I know. But he playing but he, but he playing defensive line. That's not their yeah. fault. <laughs> he's play, he's, no. a, he's a linebacker size guy playing. What I'm looking what I what I want to see, I want to see more usage of Michael Parsons. Guys, I'm telling you, go back and watch the tape. Michael was lining up at the one technique. Like in a three point stance, I don't think that's the best way to use number eleven. Mm-hmm. I know he's good, but is he one technique good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, those are just some questions that I have going into after this bye week. I'm gonna be looking at all of that, man. But this was a good show. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, good sir. show, man. Hey, uh, Nui will be back tomorrow. He is uh, making his way back from Houston, probably smelling like champagne and beer. He's at the right. Breakfast Club, yeah, yeah. waffles and <laughs> yeah. grits and all type of stuff. Oh, he, hey, he can't be with DJ Envy. <laughs> 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 He ain't out there in age, all right? <laughs> 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 hey, that's the Players Lounge, man. We'll be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Thank you for rocking with us. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!